Hi there, everyone. Jeff C. here. It is uh, Wednesday, November the 27th, and I'm um, going to take a look into Hollywood here. Um, there's a story that probably should be a huge story, but um, is actually just going to be a little story on CNN and other networks. And uh, why it should be a huge story is because it involves espionage, Hollywood, the um, secret spying and the documentation and photographs of nuclear secrets being passed on to a certain state. I'm sure you've heard of this state before. The little state with very, very big ambitions. Yes, I am talking about none other than Israel. And um, here is the story, um, thanks to a, uh, some, a friend on Twitter, this Fight Club producer, Arnon Milchan, I helped Israeli spy agency. This is a big time Hollywood producer who has come out and admitted that he secretly helped Israel develop its nuclear weapons program by stealing these secrets from the United States. Um, the price for stealing nuclear documents used to be pretty high back when the Rosenbergs were around if you remember them, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, who were convicted guilty of conspiring to commit espionage during the time of war and executed. Yes, 1953, a very, very famous case, the two Rosenbergs, I'll put them in the picture here, there they are, who were accused and convicted of passing on secrets to Russia, nuclear secrets which helped russia obtain its nukes and become the major rival of the united states that was considered a big deal back then in fact that was probably the biggest story of the year back then that was huge but now now you get the cnn treatment so let's watch the cnn sort of coverage of this story and it's all smiles and chuckles justin timberlake vince vaughn brad pitt and angelina jolie just a few of the stars Hollywood producer Arnon Milchin has rubbed shoulders with. But it's his story that should be made into a movie. The Israeli-born businessman behind hits like 12 Years a Slave. I have a business proposition for you. Pretty Woman. Come on, hit me before I lose my nerve. And Fight Club says he spent years as an Israeli secret agent and arms dealer. In a stunning interview that aired Monday on an Israeli investigative program, Milchin detailed how he was recruited in the 1960s to Israel's Bureau of Scientific Relations, where he helped gather technology to further Israel's still unacknowledged nuclear program, saying, quote, I did it for my country and I'm proud of it. Milchin moved to Hollywood in the 1970s, but he suggested his efforts on behalf of the Israeli government didn't end completely. Of course not. Milchin indicated other big Hollywood players were also involved, saying, quote, When I came to Hollywood, I detached myself completely from my physical activities to dedicate myself to what I really wanted, filmmaking. But sometimes... It gets mixed up. No fucking the 68-year-old Milchin owns New Regency Films and has produced more than 120 movies, working closely with directors such as Martin Scorsese and Oliver Stone. He forged an especially close relationship with actor Robert De Niro, who was also featured in the Israeli television program. I did ask him once we spoke about something, and he told me... Um, that he was an Israeli and that he, and that he, of course, would do these things for his country. So you want to come to Hollywood and act like a big shot without actually doing anything? Yeah. In a story that seems reminiscent to last year's Oscar-winning true-to-life film Argo that depicted the CIA Hollywood collaboration to rescue U.S. diplomats stuck in Iran, it's a safe bet Hollywood execs will be fighting to bring this story to the big screen, too. Now, we reached out to Milchin today for comment, Jim, but we were told he is traveling in Europe and unavailable. You, you know, I have been covering all things Hollywood for a while, Jim, and not much surprises me that goes on there these days, but this, 
This is a wow story. This is, so and it's too bad he's unavailable. Right. When he is available, he should come on the Situation Room and tell his story to Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> I'll pay money to it. see him. Put it out there, baby. Wonderful. We'll get him. That sounds good. All right, Michelle, thank you. Wonderful. They're going to bring him on the Situation Room so he can go with another Zionist and spew some more bullshit. This is hilarious. I mean, it's sad and it's hilarious at the same time. As I said, the Rosenbergs were executed, and most pe most people were outraged at the fact that they had been. Well, we'll go by what what the history tells us that they actually stole these secrets and passed them on to the Russians, who were able to obtain their nuclear weapons. So this dude is is directly responsible for Israel becoming nuclear. Perhaps though, that was always part of the plan with Israel. So perhaps. The nudge, nudge, wink, wink, passing of of uh, secrets and documents might have been allowed, <laughs> considering this incredibly cozy relationship that Hollywood has with the powers that be, especially the um, White House and the military. And I've talked about that a lot before in the past. And and there, it, there, anybody who knows anything about Hollywood knows that it is run by. Jewish interest by and large and therefore Jewish films and Jewish filmmakers uh, you know whether you're Steven Spielberg or, or uh, any one of these other massive uh, powerful um, producers Weinsteins <laughs> there's so many right and that is the reality is that um, Hollywood really is just another f arm of the government it, it really is it's the propaganda wing and uh these movies it's funny they they refer to true to life argo which is uh pretty much bullshit the the movie but it's it's greatly made i'm sure i'm never going to watch it because I, I made up my mind quite a long time ago that i'm not going to watch propaganda hollywood jewish produced propaganda and um i don't know play this a little bit just to show you how rich this guy is. He is a multi-billionaire. Mr. of the world's billionaires is known for creating movies like JFK, LA Confidential, and even Pretty Woman. But beyond the big screen, Milchin is an avid art collector. He's been collecting since age 21 while living in Israel and working in the pharmaceutical industry. At the time, there was no television, no radio, no thing. Politics and art and, and communication and media was all in art. Milchin's passion for art began with books, fascinated by stories about artists who would give their life for the canvas. Whether it's somebody cut his ear like Van Gogh or somebody would just paint to get a meal. This is a 1914 landscape uh, by Egon Schiller. It's called Autumn Sun. Certainly one of the most important pictures in the collection. Uh, certainly. Uh, the one that uh, emptied his wallet the most to the tune of, well, certainly eight figures. Chris Eakin, former head of the Impressionist and Modern Art Department okay. at Christie's New York, manages Milchin's collection, which is worth upwards of $600 million, with paintings from artists like Gauguin and Pizarro to Picasso, Francis Bacon, and Basquiat. I can... Yeah, I'm going to quote uh, Indiana Jones here. Those pieces of art belong in a museum and not in some trader's palace it's absolutely disgusting how how it's become i mean that's the reality there's no way that this guy just comes out and spills the bean about the beans about being a, a spy for all these decades and just goes right back and you know starts producing again his blockbuster movies and uh collecting his gazillion dollar art trophies um this guy obviously is in the inside here and he is being used um and here off the guardian they have arnon michelin and uh milchan sorry and a brief history of hollywood spies the history of hollywood is littered with spies no no doubt about it so it should come as no surprise that producer arnon milchan began working his life as an israeli secret agent and arms dealer the billionaire behind fight club pretty women and he confirmed rumors on a sh on his shady past in an interview broadcast on Israeli television on Monday, at one point we learned he ran 30 companies worldwide on behalf of the Israeli government. 30 fucking companies. And uh, moving a lot of arms. He joins uh, a long list of, uh, or a long line of Hollywood power brokers who have dabbled in the spying game. 
Uh, in the early 1950s, the head of foreign and domestic censorship at Paramount was a CIA employee named Luigi Lurashi. Um Among Lurashi's many covert triumphs was the insertion of the well-dressed, uh, well-dressed, respectable Negroes, the Uncle Toms, into U.S. movies to undermine Soviet propaganda about the state of race relations in the United States. Uh, Lura, Lura Rassi, um certainly wasn't working alone. In 1950, the CIA bought the film rights to George Orwell's Animal Farm and funded the 1954 animated version, ensuring that the book me- the book's message was portrayed as strictly anti-Soviet. Likewise, the 1958 uh, film of Graham Greene's The Quiet American revised the story of the novel on the advice of the CIA, portraying the morally morally dubious uh, titular. Uh, character as an an unambiguous hero. The author himself, a spy for MI6, disowned the adaptation, pardon me, calling it a propaganda film for America. And what comes out of Hollywood that isn't propaganda? I don't know. I'm giving up completely on Hollywood. I don't watch any of these blockbusters. I don't give a flying fuck. It's all programming. Uh, there have been countless collaborations since for uh, for the filming of Tom Clancy's The Sum of All Fears. In 2002, producers were granted a personal tour of the CIA headquarters and star Ben Affleck teamed up with agency analysts to research the role. In her book, The CIA in Hollywood, How the Agency Shapes Film and Television, U.S. academic Tricia Jenkins describes uh, the... 2012 film Argo by Ben Affleck as CIA propaganda whitewashing the agency's involvement in Iran. Um, the Iranian media went further accusing Affleck himself of being a spy, of course. You don't get that high. You do not get that high without making these deals and doing the real work that they want you to be doing. He would not be the first actor to uh, to sideline in espionage if he was. The release of the official U.S. spy, uh, spy files in 2008 revealed uh, Sterling Hayden, who played the mad general in Dr. Strangelove, who can forget that, uh, was drawing on his first-hand experience of military work as a U.S. secret agent parachuted into Croatia. Uh, other actors... Lives as spies are less a matter of public record, more the product of romantic speculation. Uh, one recent Greta Garbo uh, biography suggests that she planned to personally assassinate Hitler and help smuggle uh, Danish physicist Niles Bohr out of Hitler's reach, although this is more than likely to have been the work of a double agent. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, some of these people want to claim credit for, for um, tall feats. But this is the reality. Um, this dude is a major player in Hollywood, as most most Jews are that are high up in Hollywood. They have an unbelievable amount of power and money, and um, they're there to program people. And if you look at these movies, you can see like these all these movies that he's producer. These are massive movies for the most part. These are are big Hollywood blockbusters the kind of movies i never watch (laughs) i just can't handle them i just i smell the bullshit from miles away you know but that's it i mean that you can see daredevil that's where he'd be close with um cia affleck and these people are you know they're worshipped in hollywood they really are and this guy he's all smiles right he's all Smiles and chuckles. Doesn't think anything's going to happen to him. Of course, what is going to happen to him? Why is it a big deal when other people steal secrets? I mean, usually it's the harshest, it's the biggest thing that you could possibly do against your country is to spy on it, you know? And this guy, he doesn't give a flying fuck about the United States. He's there for Israel. And then you're going to have to wonder where all these guys, what their, their, their real mission is, what their real roles are. But it's just another example of the unending stream of bullshit that comes out of Hollywood. This guy should be hung for being um, a spy. He should be hung. And that's the reality. Fuck him.